Hey everyone, it's Angus here. I've had a couple of people ask me how to import and I guess filter and use custom lists. So what I thought I'd show you is just a, a, a quick way that I do it. Um, the wonderful thing about TradingView is there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do this. And it's quite useful because you can build up different lists. So I go through Yahoo News every now and again. If there's a stock that I like the look of, I might put into one of my lists. You can see here I've got what I call my at-home economy list. And this is just a whole bunch of stocks that seem to be doing well in the um, uh, COVID type environment. You know, stocks that, you know, people who are working from home or, you know, learning online. Um, you know, there's stocks that seem to be doing particularly well at the moment in the, the current environment. I've also got lists for things like, you know, electric vehicles. You know, it's a bit of a bubble at the moment. And so you can see, you know, there's a list of all the, you know, different electric vehicles and how they're all going. Um, you know, just different things that I can keep track of. So, you know, when I go and have a look at, you know, if I've got a little bit of money in my account, you know, what do I want to invest in? Then I can sort of flick through one of these lists. So the easiest way to do it is, you know, you go file, uh, create new list, and you can call it, you know, Angus123. Go save. And once you've got your list, you can obviously just add stocks, you know. So if you can think of, you know, Tesla, you know, Apple, um, so that's one way that you can, you know, build your own list very quickly. Like it's, you know, it's quite straightforward. You could also just simply right click on a stock and you can go add to watch list and whichever watch list is open will allow you to add that stock. But what I want to show you is let's say you've got a, a, a much longer list of stocks that you want to sort through. So let's say someone, you know, gave you a list of 100 stocks and you thought, wow, you know, it's a crazy amount of stocks. How am I going to go through that and look at each one? Um, or, you know, for what, you know, for whatever reason, you've got a long list of stocks that you want to import. So what I'll do is I'll go to um, say a list of stocks and I'll show you how I do this from scratch. So uh, this is a list of all the ASX announcements today. So I'm just you know, on the Australian Stock Exchange at the moment. If I go refresh announcements. So obviously a very good catalyst is things like earnings and things like news. You know, they'll both make a stock run fairly well. The ASX um, in Australia, you know, produces a list of, you know, well for every, every company it basically has a list of news that's related to that company being released by that company. Some of it's what's called price sensitive news. And so price sensitive news is more likely to have a, um, a price outcome. And if you scroll down, you can see PWL, PPS, FSG, you know, that's what's considered price sensitive news there. So you can click on each one of these headings. You can read about, you know, what the news is um, and then try and work out if it then is a stock that you'd like to buy or not. The funny thing with news, of course, is, you know, you can look at, you know, maybe a headline like this, you think, wow, that's going to do a great thing for that, you know, stock price. Um, often you can see, you know, great news around earnings and, you know, the, the stock goes the other way. So, you know, it's always quite interesting as to, you know, what, what constitutes good news or not. But what I want to do, just for the sake of this exercise, is I'm going to show you how I do this. So I highlight all these shares. You can see there's, you know, bucket load of shares. And there's no way you can sort of go through all these stocks, you know, one by one and read the news. Um, I mean, you could, but, you know, the market would be closing there a week later by the time that you did. All I've done is I've highlighted them all. I've copied them. Um, I'm just going to paste them into an Excel spreadsheet. You could do it into a text editor or something else. Um, but, you know, Excel is obviously quite easy. You can see if I scroll down, see how PWL PPS FSG has this little um, uh, column called asterisks. And so those are the ones that have that price sensitive news. So you could, if you wanted to, um, literally sort by column C and only have the stocks with price sensitive news in them. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to do everything just for the fun of it. So I'm going to delete that because all I really want for the purpose of importing to trading view is I just need a single column that says, here's all the stock codes. Um, the catch at the moment, I'm going to go, um, let me just get rid of the spaces. So I'm just going to go sort by what are we column B? And I'll say it's got a header row. And so you can see down here is a list of all the stocks. Now, the problem at the moment is if I was to import this list now into interact, uh, into TradingView, um, if there's two stocks with, let's say, the code ACC, you know, there might be a US stock called ACC. There might be an ASX, ASX stock called ACC. And so I want to make sure that I'm only importing the Australian one because this, this is a list of Australian stocks. And so in order to do that, you always have the exchange. Um, with two little, you know, with a column, like, you know, two little dot dots um, to identify what the exchange is. 
If it was purely a list of US stocks, then you don't need it. You know, TradingView basically defaults to US stocks. So I'm going to highlight, well, you know, basically put an ASX in front of all those. Now, if I was to export this now, it'd basically be a CSV file, which means that there'd be a tab in between the ASX um, column and the 81H. And so just a very simple way of getting around this is I'm just going to go equals that and that. And so you can see now it's a combined little column. So again, this is something you might not have to do if you've got a long list that's already been formatted. I just wanted to show you one way of doing it if you um, if you have a list that you might have to do a little bit of work with. So that's now a long list. But again, that list is now a formula. So you can see here that that ASX dash, you know, I presume it's an 8IH, is actually column A1 and B1. So I highlight all that, right click. I'm just going to go paste. Uh, I think I didn't copy it yet. So I'm going to go copy, control C, and I'm going to go paste just as values. And so now you can see it's actually a value. So now I'm just going to go delete column A, B, C. So delete. This, this is a super simple thing. Like it's not complicated. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. All I'm trying to show you is how I've taken that um, ASX web page and uh, this ASX web page, and I'm now getting to a list that I can import into TradingView. So all I do now is I go file, save as, um, I guess, computer. And my desktop, I'll just save it to my desktop for something to do. Um, and I'll call it um, ASX News uh, 22, because today's the 22nd. Um, and I need to make sure that I save it as a text file. So probably any of these text files are fine, but I'm just going to save as this text MS DOS one. So I save that. And I think it's got to be a text file for you to import it. That's fine. I can get rid of Excel. I can go back to Trading View. And now what I can do is I can go File, Import List, and I've got ASX News 22, and I can go Open. And so now I've got all those ASX stocks. Every now and again, you might get an error, AFZ. So I might go up here and go AFZ. Um, there's no Australian stock by that, so that's probably a, a bond or you know something different. Um, but what I want to do is I want to sort now by change percent because I'm only really interested in the stocks where something interesting has happened. And so you can see these ones are now all green. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to go and delete all these red ones. I could very easily just go and delete, you know, the, the rest of these. Um, you know, if I highlight these ones here that were an error, you know, I can just click X. Let's start at the bottom, X, X, X. Because what I want to do is sometimes when a stock has news, there might be like a delay of one or two days before it runs. And so these are all the stocks that are running immediately because of the news today. But some of these stocks, you know, might run tomorrow. You just never know. So what I want to do is I want to leave that list. But the next trick that I want to show you is I think there's probably going to be 200 stocks here. You know, there's probably a crazy number of stocks that are in this list, you know, at least, at least 100 or so. Um, and you'll notice that when you import it, it'll deduplicate them. So I'm sure that in my original um, ASX list down here, you can see AFZ, you know, see I had multiple versions of that one. And so by the time TradingView does the import, you know, AOU, and again, multiple copies, um, TradingView deduplicates it. So that's quite good from that perspective. So what I want to do is I want to basically look through all these stocks here and try and whittle down this list so I don't have to look at you know this mega number of stocks. And so the way that I do that is I open up the stock screener and I make sure there's no flag that's ticked there. And I'm just going to make sure none of my filters are being applied just to show you how I do it. So I'm going to go no. And I've got the Australian flag selected because these are Australian stocks. This process will work whether it's Australian, US, Hong Kong, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you've got the right flag for the stocks that you've got. If you've got both Australian stocks and US stocks, then you have to do this exercise twice because you need to you know, only screen for the stocks in the market that you're in. So I've got 2,000 matches, which is all the stocks on the Australian uh, Stock Exchange. I've got my list of 200 here. So how do I get my list here into the screener or how do I you know, filter it down? And the super simple way of doing it is I, I click on it, I right click and I go unflag all symbols in the system just to make sure there's nothing already flagged. Then I highlight them all, just control A. I'm going to click 
and they're all purple. And so, you know, you could choose to make them red, green, blue, yellow, whatever color you like. It doesn't really matter. But then down here where the ticker is, I'm going to tick the little flag here and I'm going to click green, which matches this green flag here. And so you can see, as I guess, there's 203 matches. So in this list here, there's 203 stocks. So that's a lot of stocks to go through. I could literally sort by percent change. And I could start going through the stocks that are at the top. You know, what have these stocks done, you know, that have made them rocket? You know, then I'll go back and I'll look up the news and you know, have a bit of a read to see, you know, why these ones are up so much. You know, some of them just gone gangbusters. You know, that one there, Chalice Gold, looks quite interesting. Just just in terms of pattern, you know, he's obviously had earnings. And so on his earnings, he's probably had a pretty bullish earnings result. And so he's gone up. Tomorrow it might come back a little bit, then go back up again. So he's one that I'd probably bookmark and, you know, keep an eye on just as a you know guess without having done any further analysis. Now, what I want to try and do is just the way that I like to trade is I'm going to start applying filters. So instead of going through 203 stocks, what I might do is say, show me stocks that have only had, let's let's be really bullish and say, you know, million, um, you know, is their average 90 day uh, volume of, of um, uh, trading, the number of stocks that are traded on an average basis. And so that takes me down to 75. So you know, instantly I've gone from 200 down to 75. So being a million shares or more a day is, you know, fairly liquid type stocks. I, I typically use 100,000 in the Australian stock market um, and, you know, even 100,000 in the US. But just for the sake of whittling this down, we'll try, 100, 000, uh, we'll try a million. Then I'll say, well, I only want to find stocks that have had a fairly good year. So only show me stocks where they, let's say, above 50, you know, they've gone up at least 50% over the last 12 months. So that now takes me down to a list of 24, which is, you know, quite manageable. Um, I then also want to say, instead of just stocks that are spiking, you know, for sort of no really good reason, um, show me stocks where they're supported by volume. So I might say only show me stocks where the volume is greater than one. That's the relative volume. And so you can see, you know, all my headings across here, you can set these up yourself. You can add whatever columns you like in. Um, you know, trading is awesome. You can add a whole bunch of different things. Um, I personally am probably only interested in stocks that are above, let's say, 10 cents. So I might put in 0.1. And so that's taken me from, gets rid of those super micro pennies. So that's taken me from 200 down to eight stocks reasonably quickly. Like, you know, this is me going through and talking this through. You could say, you know, only show me stocks with the RSI is below, you know, 70, you know, just in, in terms of value, for example. I typically try and avoid stocks that are over 70 um, just because you know that's probably a fairly good reversal point but some of these hot stocks will be up over that price point so then i tend to sort by three month performance because you know rather than saying you know what have they done over the year i kind of want to see what they're doing more recently as well so you can see here this elixir energy is down seven percent um, on whatever the news was that he had it's actually sent his price backwards so you know, that's not a stock that i want to look at today so I'm going to click change and I'm going to show you, only show me stocks that are above, let's say, 2%. And so then I've gone from my 200 stocks down to these two, which is SES, which, you know, he's up 3%, but, you know, it doesn't particularly look exciting. Um, Megaport's a, you know, fairly good long-term favourite. I've certainly traded him enough times. So again, not doing anything particularly exciting, but... Um, I'd, I'd probably have a closer look at him, you know, just to see if he does continue up. And so then what I'll do is because I've now filtered down too many stocks, what I might do is I'll go back through here and I'm going to get rid of my RSI because some of these stocks will be really hot runners. So that's put another one back. So um, I've got this one RSH back. So let's have a look at him. So again, you know, he's he's pretty well at a resistance type point. So and again, you might like might like to see him go up another point or two. Um, let's get rid of the average volume and say let's make it 100k. Let's see what that brings back in. No, so it didn't bring anything back in. Oh, I know what I've done. I've made the mistake. See how I've got um, show me the relative volume below one that should have been above one. So that's much better. So let's go and put those back in. So um, what I was saying is show me stocks that have gone up, but where the average volume is down, whereas I actually want the opposite. I wanted to see stocks where the volume, where the relative volume is above one. 
because it'll show me stocks that have got extra volume. So this one here, Chalice Gold Mines running hard. WMX is running pretty hard. So WMX is WMX is one I'm more likely to look at. PLL. That one I think has probably gone too hard too far. So anyway, that's just a different way to be able to look at you know these stocks. And you've got your 200 odd stocks in your list here. And so I'd like to get back to having around 20 or so. So I'm going to say, show me what this filter is. It's above 0.1, which I'm happy with. Um, changes above 2, which I'm happy with. Three month performance, I'm sorted by that. I'm saying it's got to be above 50. Um, the relative volume is above 1. I might just get rid of that for now. I'm saying the average volume, it's got to be 100,000 or 50 million. What else have I got? I haven't got anything else on. So, SES, RSH, CHN, WMX, PLL, and MP1. And so let's say that I was happy with those, with that list of stocks now that I've you know filtered it a few different ways and different times. I've still got this long list here and I want to keep an eye on these ones. So what I'd actually do is I go control all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to change my flag to a purple flag. And so you can see they've all disappeared because the flag's now purple. So if I change that back to a purple flag and then I go up to my list up here and I click on that and I go down to my purple list. And so you can see I've got you know, a list of my purple stocks here. Now I could just leave it in this purple list, but if I clear my flags, they'll disappear and I, know, I won't know where they were. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right, I'm going to click on it, I'm going to go make a copy. I'm going to call it um, ASX22 for the date shortlist. I'll go save. And so you can see here I've got my shortlist of stocks that I'll keep an eye on. So, um, you know, CHN, you know, he's running pretty hard. He's probably a long way up. That's not a stock that I'd like to chase at this stage. PLL, again, you know, it's probably gone too far up. WMX mm, might be a bit more reasonable. So, um, you know, he looks like he's had a sort of an all-time high there. He's kind of broken above that. So I might put a little star on him. Do that. So if that was like a previous resistance sort of point uh, template, say so that was a previous resistance area. And so I like it once he's broken through that. I, th I think I'd probably try and wait to see if it came back and retested it um, and then ran again. But, you know, I'd certainly keep an eye on that stock. RSH. Again, you know, not too bad. He's back up against the resistance area there. So, um, again, with him, I'd probably want him to, you know, maybe break to 245. So what I'll do is I'll set an alert. And so I'll just say RSH crossing 245. And so that way I don't have to look at this stock again. It'll only give me an alert once he's broken above that little sort of resistance area. SES. So again, he's sort of sitting in the middle of his bands. Um, I do quite like the look of his RSI down here. It's under 54. You can see this one I've obviously looked at before where I've got an alert on it. So it says, give me an alert if, it, if the RSI crosses through 60. That just sort of gives me an idea there's a bit of momentum. You can see he's sort of sitting, he's sitting around here. I want him to come back up. You can see there's roughly 15% in it if he you know, goes back up to his old highs. But you know, it certainly is a resistance point through there. You know, so I, I, you know, at least between here and there, I know there's roughly 15%. The chance of him doing that is pretty good. But then I'd have a stop loss very close to that line so that, you know, if he does fall back, you know, after hitting it, then I, you know, can bank a little bit of profit. And MP1, he said, I've traded this one, you know, numerous times. Um, again, same sort of deal with him where, you know, he's down here at the moment. If I sort of said, where is his old highs? Well, he seems to get stuck around here. So that's kind of where he gets stuck in the past as a, as a bit of a resistance area. Somewhere around there. So what's my ability to make a bit of profit on him? So there's, let's say there's 10% in that, you know, in theory, if he goes up. And so hopefully that's useful. Um, and of course, if you want to export them, you can literally go um, export list and that will then, you know, export whatever's in that list back to a CSV. So Hopefully that was a useful video. You can see how it went from 200 stocks down to five or six. Thank you very much.